Hey guys, in this section, we're gonna talk about the different abdominal pelvic divisions. These are different ways that we can divide the abdominal pelvic region um, into different areas. We'll see that we have four abdominal pelvic quadrants or nine abdominal pelvic regions. Here you see the abdominal pelvic quadrants. Um, quad meaning four, right? So these are four regions that we're dividing up the abdominal pelvic area. So the abdomen and the pelvis. To get the abdominal pelvic quadrants, you just draw a plus sign um, and the lines intersect at the umbilicus um, or the belly button. We call the belly button the umbilicus because this is where the umbilical cord attached when the fetus was in the womb. So you draw a plus sign, right? A vertical line and a horizontal line, and they cross at the belly button. And then you can see that that divides the abdominal pelvic area up into four different regions. And naming them is really easy. We just name them um, right and left, upper and lower. The only way you could possibly get messed up here is if you mix right and left. It's not my right and left, it's the patient or the subject's right and left. So crisscross. So looking at this guy up here, this is the right upper quadrant and then the right lower quadrant. The left upper quadrant and the left lower quadrant. Um, we use these really frequently, like when charting, for example. Um, if you're working in the emergency room and a patient comes in with um, abdominal pain, in order to note where that pain is in the chart, you could use the quadrants. Um, also, when you read up on different disease states, they'll say, you know, for appendicitis, for example, it will say lower right quadrant pain. That tells you that when somebody has appendicitis, you know the general area of where the pain will typically be. These are so much easier to use than trying to describe um, a location in a different way. For example, say that the person had a, whatever, a stab wound that was right here. You could try and describe that by saying it's, you know, two inches above and two inches to the right of the belly button. But if this guy wore a different size, say it was a child, two inches above and two inches to the right would be in a completely different place in a child, right? It would be way further to the side because their, their stomach's smaller, their, their abdominal region's smaller. Um, so it's difficult to describe a specific place or location when we're talking about the abdominal pelvic area. Dividing the abdominal pelvic area up into these quadrants or regions, as we'll see in a second, makes it a lot easier. Um, <clears throat> for example, if you look here, I'm showing you the organs that are present in the abdominal pelvic area. Um, if you draw a line down the center, and then the horizontal line is harder to draw without the skin because you can't see where the belly button is, um, but it's right about here. That gives us our four abdominal pelvic quadrants. And again, just right, left, upper, and lower. So this is the right upper quadrant, the right lower quadrant, and then over here is the left upper quadrant and the left lower quadrant. Now you can see the organs that are present in each of the quadrants. Um, this big brown organ right here is the liver you can see that the majority of the mass of the liver is in the, let me change colors, is in the right upper quadrant. Now, if you go online and research any type of um, liver problem, so like hepatitis, um, inflammation of the liver, you'll notice that patients will typically present with right upper quadrant pain, right? right upper quadrant pain right away sends bells off that tells you something's wrong with the liver. Um, the appendix. The appendix is right down here. You can, can't really see it. It hangs down here and it kind of is going behind the small intestine. Um, but the appendix you guys can see is in the right lower quadrant. So if somebody has really sharp severe pain in the right lower quadrant, immediately I'm going to think appendicitis. 
um, the stomach. This is the stomach right here. You guys see that it is mostly up in the left upper quadrant. Some organs stretch between all of them. The small intestine, for example, this tightly coiled tube here in the center is the small intestine. Um, it goes everywhere. Same thing with the large intestine. The large intestine wraps all around like this. So it's present in all of the different um, quadrants as well. But some of these are very specific, so we can associate um, pain with each of these quadrants um, with the specific organs in them. Also, if there was a wound here, so somebody say somebody had a stab wound in the right upper quadrant, you would be worried about damage to the liver, right? Um, <clears throat> so these are really useful. We can also divide the abdominal pelvic region up into smaller areas. We can divide it up into nine abdominal pelvic regions. Now, um, <clears throat> in order to do this, we just draw a tic-tac-toe board across the abdomen. The vertical lines go just inside or just medial to the nipples. So right here and right here. And then the horizontal lines go just under the ribs, so like the bottom of the rib cage, and then just above the pelvic bones or just above the hips. And that will roughly give you the abdominal pelvic regions. Um, <clears throat> now naming them, these names all kind of make sense. You guys haven't learned all of the word roots and prefixes and suffixes yet, so um, <clears throat> you might not be able to like decipher these words yet, but we'll talk about them a little bit as we go. So right and left are self-explanatory. Again, crisscross, so the patient's right and the patient's left. Hypochondrium, hypo means below, right? Hyper is above, hypo is below. Chondrio or chondro refers to cartilage. So this word is literally telling you below the cartilage. When we look, um, if you pull the skin and the muscle off, you'll see that the ribs, the bone ends, and then we have cartilage that comes like this and connects the ribs to the sternum. So there's, it's called costal cartilage, but there's a bunch of cartilage that's present here. So this is kind of saying it's below the cartilage. So we've got the right hypochondrium on the right and the left hypochondrium on the left. In the middle, this is the epigastric region. Epi means upon, and you guys already learned that gastro refers to the stomach. So this is the area over the stomach. Remember, the stomach does sit right about there. Moving down to the next three regions, the right and left flank are on either side, which the, the flank is the side. These are also sometimes referred to as the lumbar regions. Um, and if you, if you grab like right here around the back, that is the lumbar region of the back. Lumbar because the five lumbar vertebrae are there in the lower back. Um, but the current lab manual uses flank, so we're gonna go with that, the right and left flank. The umbilical region should be pretty easy because that's right where the belly button is, right? And we said that the technical term for the belly button or navel is the umbilicus because that's where the umbilical cord connects. The bottom three, um, on either side, we have the right and left inguinal region. This crease right here, where, where when you fold the leg over the pelvis, that little crease um, is the inguinal crease. This region is also, um, so the name comes from that, the inguinal region. It's also sometimes referred to as iliac. Um, so if you see right iliac and left iliac, it's the same thing as inguinal. Finally, in the center, this is the pubic region. Um, <clears throat> the pubic region is typically um, down like in the pelvic area. Uh, so that makes sense that the, the bottom center region would be the pubic region. Now, these are um, more difficult to use as opposed to the abdominal pelvic quadrants. And not just because they're harder to name or there's more of them to memorize. It's because frequently they're, they're almost too small. They're too precise. And the organs will frequently stretch between multiple of these regions. The liver, for example, let me show you. Here you see, you see your tic-tac-toe board in pink. 
and it's divided up into the different regions, and then you see the organs underneath. So look at the liver, right? The liver is this big one right here. Um, the liver stretches between multiple regions, so you can't just say one region is associated with, um, you know, hepatitis, whereas with the quadrants, we can. We can say right upper quadrant, um, and that's, that's very common to do. Even something tiny like the appendix, look at the appendix right here, even that kind of goes between a couple different regions. The stomach, the same thing, um, it's in multiple regions. So sometimes these are just too small or too precise, especially on a really small little abdomen. Um, but I do want you to be familiar with them because they do exist and we will see them um, every once in a while. All right, that is it for the abdominal pelvic regions. Shoot me an email if you have any questions.